am Renee. And I'm Gil from the Rich Relationship with Reverend. And we found that it's the area that we feel that we are the most equipped and we have the most passion for. And so that's why marriage ministry has really been the, the real origin of how we serve the kingdom of God. It's who, it's who we are. You know, and a lot of things can be different. You know, you always have the opportunity to attend seminars and do books and maybe even hear lessons and, and preachings and messages and all those things as it relates to relationships. But one of the things that we wanted, we wanted to do is we don't hear it enough. You know, we always have the goal of always wanting to work on our relationships, but that has to be intentional. That has to be on purpose. And that's what this is really was the designed to do when it comes, when it comes to your relationships, it's work. You know, a lot of us who have been married for a little while and we have couples and we have people in, in, the, in this uh, course that are just getting started in their relationship, but we always want to start it out with, this is where it actually starts work in your relationship right now. And the first five weeks of the course is and called... I want to address. Um, one of the things that we always want to talk about is the investment in marriage. You know, we have a short amount of time to do things when it comes to just these lessons and things like that. But one thing that is so important is not only the, the, the time that you spend in this course, but the actual application of the information that we're actually going to share. You don't get better at anything if you don't practice it, if you don't put it to work. One of the most important things about putting those things into work, because if you had times where you try different things and they didn't seem to work and you kind of have gone over and over and over again and not figuring out, well, what is it? Most of the time it's because you didn't get new information. And that's what this is really designed to do. We don't believe we have the end all to be all and all the answers to every single question that everyone goes through. But we also know that the things that we are going to share with you do work. They work for us, they have been working for us. And that's what we really, really want to talk about. Because our end goal is to bring value. We want to add value to not only your relationships, but even on this platform that we are coming up to and using to get information out there, just to, to impart and to invest in other couples and other, other uh, audiences. And so we're gonna go into now, what is wanting? Well, the first five sessions is about identity and the first session is about communication. And so as we're building this, and one of the things the Lord really showed me was that Communication is how every relationship begins. Um, oneness is the, just being connected. It's when two people who are different come together. It's when um, we submit to someone or someone greater than ourselves. And oneness is what we really want to focus on in this session because being married, saying your bio, vows, don't, it doesn't make you one. There are some other things that have to happen in our lives and in our relationships that creates this oneness. And so that's why we talk about what is oneness. Oneness is something that has to be developed and cultivated and it takes time and it takes submission and it takes you being aware that you are doing things in your own. It's a difference between being alone and oneness. We want you to understand the value of being single and being alone, but we also want you to understand the importance of being one. You know, because when you think about it, before you got into your marriage or even as a single person, you were that, that lone individual, you actually had the, no responsibility for anybody else. You could do what you wanted, yeah. when you wanted, most of the time without even checking in with somebody when you wanted to make decisions. But that oneness is one of the things that you actually are going to give up when you start getting into not only marriages and, and long-term relationships, but just in relationships in general. Because the more you start engrafting and bringing people into your, your lifestyle and into your life, you're actually going to give up a little bit of yourself when it comes to that oneness that you're talking about. Yeah. And the oneness that we're referring to is the oneness that we experience with the first relationship, which is our relationship with God. And this, this session is really about us understanding why we need salvation. And so how does this oneness occur? Um, we all have natural needs food, shelter, we need um, heat, we need water, we need um, to be touched. Mm -hmm. Those are all of our natural needs. Those are just some of our natural needs. And while those needs are very significant and very, a uh, very uh, real part of our humanity, we can't only focus on those needs. You know, and, and when we talk about the, the needs, you think about it from like Renee already just kind of relayed to you about the natural needs. 
but there's also those psychological needs, the needs that when you actually have that sense of belonging, you have to have the relationships. Those are things, your esteem, those are things that are natural in every single person when you're actually just living life as a human being. But when those things come into to life or when you start living those things, that's when they start changing a little bit. Yeah, and, and I think it's just important that we understand that every single human being, I think so many times we focus on how we're different. The one thing that makes us alike is that we all have the same basic needs. And when we begin to see that in relationships, it takes away some of the mystery of, well, I don't know this person, but you have to focus on what you have in common and you have to focus on the things that make us alike and not the things that make us different. You know, when you think about your relationships, as you were that single person, like I mentioned already, when we go into talking about what are our unmet needs, we are operating from a position of deficiency. Before you get into relationships, you're that lone individual and there are some things that you may have gotten right when it comes to just growing up and just you know, all the things that Renee mentioned as far as your career goes, and, and maybe you've already established yourself as a lone individual and you had something to offer someone else. But when you have those deficiencies, they become really apparent when you talk about your unmet needs. And that's what we're talking about in this actual first week of the session is talking about not just the unmet needs of being the lone individual and what they can actually do to relationships. We actually have to realize that as that single person, you have deficiencies. And to think that you don't is actually setting yourself up to even have more difficulties in the long term. And, you know, I think one of the things that we notice, and a part of the reason why we've done this session where it's more with our video is because I think we have, we, we neglect the reality that we need each other. But at the same time, there's as, there's a time for us to be exposed and be available. But it's also a time for us to have the time to be have the safety of our privacy so that we can get the help we need. And that's one of the reasons why we try to create an environment for couples that they can come into and get the help they need and not have to worry about anything other than the freedom to be vulnerable. And so the need to belong and the need to have community, but also the need for privacy, the need to have the time to work through things without feeling like you're being put on blast. And that's one of the things that's important to us is to make sure that those unmet needs that we may have, that we may even be aware of, can be brought to the forefront so that we can begin to grow and really mature. You know, we all have past. We all have past experiences. We all have past events that have actually shaped who we are mm -hmm. as individuals. And some of those things are good and some of those things are bad. And that's what we're actually talking about in this first topic about what we, how does one this actually occur? Well, the first part is actually acknowledging and understanding that as a lone individual, there are things that you have to be focused on or mindful about even from your singleness to your to, to connectedness, right. when you actually get involved with other people or even other significant people, and from a romantic standpoint, that those deficiencies are the things that we want to address before you get closer and closer, because yeah. now you have to spend time, effort, energy, and understanding that I was deficient before I came in. So now that I'm with someone else, they have deficiencies. So now we need to come to a point to where how do I get those unmet needs and those natural needs have been met? How do I actually come together as in oneness to another person to become more embraced as a relationship? And we actually talk about it as far as who is your source. And, and, the, and even though like from the natural perspective, your source could be your job, it could be your husband, it could be your children, it could be lots of things, but the source of the most unmet need is our need for salvation. And I think that's the one thing that we have noticed when working with couples, you can give them skills and you can give them tools and you can give them community, you can give them support, but without the oneness that comes from us having a relationship with Jesus Christ and us not just having a verbal where we confess with our mouth and believe with our heart, but where our life is aligned with that, we, we see that that's one of the biggest shortcomings in marriage relationships because we ignore or we underestimate the value of having Christ be at the center. If you notice that there's a three, um, three, is in order for, in order for that to happen, there's some things that have to happen. And so the first step in really having a healthy, strong marriage, healthy, strong relationship is to have a relationship with Jesus Christ. And, and it says on the screen, if you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. We all have a deep, deep need
for salvation. And so many times we think that I'll get this or I'll get that. I'll get a husband or a car or a baby or I'll get to be a size four. And all of those things don't fulfill that need because the space that's in our heart that God is supposed to be filled cannot be supplemented. It cannot be substituted. And so we would be doing you a disservice to begin talking to you about all the things that it takes to make your marriage work or your relationship work without telling you that the first step is to give your heart and your life to Christ. You know, because you think about it before you actually get to that point, we actually look at ourselves as our own source. Sometimes like Renee mentioned, when it comes to our careers and our vocations and our identity and those types of things that we talked about in the previous uh, lessons, that source has to be foundation first, because if that's not the first relationship that you actually work on, which is the one with Christ, it's going to erode all the other ones that come after that. And it, it, it pollutes it because I know for me, before I got saved, I was a very bitter, unforgiving, hateful person. And the person that led me to Christ, she explained to me that, and we were on a trip going to Czechoslovakia, going on a shopping trip. She invited me to go to Czechoslovakia. And I was trying to figure out why does she want to go shopping with me? Why would she want to do this with me? And she asked me, you know, had I thought any more, because they've been ministering to me and talking to me for a while about giving my heart to the Lord. And she asked me, well, had I thought any more about giving my heart to the Lord? And I remember saying, I have thought about it, you mm -hmm. know? And I remember her telling me that you, I know you have unforgiveness towards your mom, but God can't forgive you until you can forgive your mom. And so you need to forgive her. And so I remember saying, I want God to forgive me. So I, therefore, I want to forgive my mom. And so I, to me, salvation was not just, um, about me not doing anything. It was also about me feeling whole. Giving my heart to Christ meant that I no longer had to be in control. Giving my heart to Christ meant that I then had a new way of approaching scenarios and people and situations. And so um, when the Bible says, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature, that creature, that doesn't happen overnight. It's a process, but that process has made me the woman that I am. And so I think that we would be remiss to tell someone that we've done this for so long and it's just us and it's just tools and it's just psychology and it's just good communication. All of those things are nice, but they pale in comparison to the true sense of knowing that I am the daughter of the King of Kings and he loved me. And if I was the only person left in the earth, he would have went to the cross for me. That gives you a sense of value that no one can give you. And so we, we want to make sure that we share that because our the Bible says we overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. That's the most important part of our relationship is our relationship with God. You know, when we talked about it from the natural sense of our spiritual needs, and it's to kind of go a little bit with where Nate was talking about, when we first got married or first, even when we were both dating, we weren't believers, we weren't followers in Christ. And that came later in our life. And for those who don't know us, uh, Renee actually led me to Christ, and, and even some of our close friends may not know this, and I'll just share this with you as it pertains to what we're actually talking about right now, was we were in such a deep spiritual need that we didn't even recognize and realize that we had a need. You know, one of the things that Renee actually helped me into understanding was, now think about it, we were newlyweds, and all the things that go on when you're newlywed, or you, all the new excitements, all the new things that you're learning about each other, now you add the dynamic of a spiritual element to it, you know, I thought I was doing all the things correct. You know, mm -hmm. I was trying to be a good husband. I was trying to be a good provider. I was trying to be there for her and actually meeting all of her physical or as the screen shows you, all those natural needs and being a natural source. I thought I was doing a good job. You know, I thought I was actually imparting into her the things that she actually needed, but little did I know it was actually st already starting to deteriorate our relationship because I was trying to do it in and of my own power. Mm -hmm. And when you try to do those things from your relationship standpoint, in and of your own power, it's just a matter of time. Mm -hmm. You know, I felt like I had a lot of endurance. I thought I could mm -hmm. go the distance, you know, and, but over time, and it was a short amount of time where I started realizing there's something missing. Mm -hmm. There was such a gap or such a hole that I couldn't meet for her because I had it in myself. Mm -hmm. And when that actually, when I had that epiphany and I thought about it, it just happened. To, it, and I will say this, it was such a coincidence that the time Renee gave her life to Christ, she came back and she started ministering to me and talking to me about this whole God thing. And I told her, you know what, keep it to yourself. 
I'm happy that you had this new experience. I'm happy for you, <laughs> but keep it to yourself. I really didn't want to hear it. And uh, uh, th just like in this lesson that we're sharing with you guys, somebody shared with her was stop talking to him, stop preaching to him, stop doing all the things that are required to get him saved, so to speak, and just be there, just live your life. And by her living my life, I had this epiphany of maybe there is more to what I was doing that I was missing, you know? And once that actually happened, I actually told Renee about it. She came, I came home from, from work one night and she actually said, have you thought any more about this? And I said, you know what? As a matter of fact, I have. And we are in the dark, in our bedroom, mm -hmm. in the bed, in the dark, can't even see the hand in front of your face. And we actually said the prayer of salvation. And that time, right then and there, I think, and I really believe in my heart of hearts, that was the start of not only what we're doing today, but that was the start of the desire that to build a better relationship with my wife because it started with Christ. Every time he tells that story, it makes me want to cry. Mm -hmm. So when we talk about it here from a faith standpoint, you know, you look at it from a faith, you have to realize, just like I had that epiphany, things are bigger than you. Mm -hmm. You, there's so much to our life that we actually are going to experience, but you have to realize when from a faith standpoint, you don't have to do this alone. When we say alone, just like you guys invest in the time and the effort and the energy and your resources and anything like that, just to be here with us tonight, that says that you have faith. Mm -hmm. Those are how you exercise and apply those things to your actual life. And, you know, I think so many times, you know, marriage is getting a bad rap because it's put in the place of faith and not in the place of, and it's, it's, it's a part of your life. Your faith is your relationship with God and marriage is the way you express it. The way I look at marriage, I look at it, it's a place for people to see the masculine and the feminine aspect of God operating in the earth. So when the enemy is attacking you, he's really not just attacking you, he's attacking the image of God. And so when we understand that we are his representatives, that we're his children, we understand why faith and purpose and mission are so important. And because we've been doing this for so long, we see so many couples who think that it's about the wedding or that it's about the, um, the, the, the things you accomplish as far as the financial accomplishments. But all that is going to get old. And that's why you see people looking for more stuff and more things and more things and busier and busier because they don't, they're not living in their life for, with faith, with Christ at the center of it. And having a sense of purpose, you know, what is it that God can do with your life? What is he, how can he take what you've gone through and what you experienced to help produce the plan he has for your life? Mm -hmm. You know, and that's something that for me was a long journey as far as finding out, even before I became a believer was, what is my purpose? Why was I created? That was just a question that I had that I longed for and wanted to know. And if I didn't have that relationship with Christ, there's no way I could find out. I may have been good at sports. I may have been academically strong. I may have had a good career vocational wise, but still that was not my purpose. That still was not why I was created. We are not created just to work a job from nine to five to accumulate more stuff, to go on to buy more things and to do more experiences when it really doesn't meet up or it doesn't impart anything, anything into anyone else. And that kind of leads you into your mission. That's how we got involved and started in the marriage ministry and talking about just working with couples because when you think about your mission, you have to think about it from the perspective of what breaks your heart? Mm -hmm. What is it something that you long to do and something that you want to make a difference in? And that is going to lead to your mission. And this is what our mission has birthed through us and through that faith and through the purpose that God has put us on this planet to do. And we really believe that. And that's why we're doing this one, this cold mm -hmm. lesson. And you know, one of the things that I can say just from my own experience, um, I've owned businesses and had careers and made lots of money, but there is nothing more fulfilling than knowing that your life is impacting someone else's life. There is no replacement for that. So if you look at people who are um, at certain levels in their life, you're like, well, why are they? I think about even like Mother Teresa. I'm like, what motivated her? How could she be so selfless? Because once you experience the fulfillment that comes from serving other people and knowing that the words you speak and the life that you live is leaving a legacy, money can't buy that, prestige, 
fame, nothing can compare, can compare to that. And so what we want to really impart into all of us together as, a, as, as couples and as a community is that what we do for Christ is the only thing that's going to last. Mm -hmm. And marriage is not where we come to get our needs met. That is salvation. We get saved to get our needs, needs met. And so when you're talking to people and when you understand that, you know, Gil, was, we were, someone asked him about how was I as a wife and he said I was light and not because of my weight or my skin color, but because I don't put the weight of my needs on him. I take them to the Lord. You know, when you think about how do you, this getting our needs met, actually, how can we get our needs met? Not only from the scripture standpoint, it comes with actually starting it and getting to the end of yourself. Mm -hmm. When you get to the end of yourself and your own capabilities and all the things that you can do, and, and this can actually even come into play even after you've given your life to Christ, because we still have that regenerating part. We're still going to be operating in our own nature. We're still going to be, we're still going to get lured into some of the things that we have, may have done before. But when you're actually doing this from the perspective of not only can I produce something that's going to benefit somebody else, these are the capabilities that God has put on the inside of me. And that's going to empower you not to come to a physical limitation or you're going to have this physical endurance. You're going to find out that I have more endurance. I have yeah. more capability. I have more to do what he's called me to do. And, you know, and that, that scripture seems so simplistic. And I think what I have come to realize is that the Bible makes life enjoyable. There's some of the things that even I think about for us, like when we got married, we weren't saved. We didn't know the Lord. And while you can be married and be unsaved and you can have a really good relationship, but the Bible says only what we do for Christ is going to last. There are some things, you and I were talking about this, well, you don't think we had a good relationship before we got married, before we got saved? Yeah, we had a good relationship, but you will have a great relationship. And there are some elements that God brings into your life, like peace, um, purpose, a sense of rest and joy. Those things cannot come from anywhere except the Lord. And so there are certain things that we may be missing in our lives, even as believers, because we've not really tapped into or we not. Romans 12 says, present yourself for God, to God a living sacrifice holy and acceptable. We've not really submitted ourselves to him. And so this is not just about you um, saying the words with your mouth, but it's really about living it from your life so that the fruit of what you say you believe can begin to pro produce something other than us chasing after stuff. You know, you, you're going to get to the end of your rope eventually. And that's where this is actually talking about. And that's where we're actually starting from this point of reference, because it's an actual free gift. It was freely given, freely accepted. You don't have to do anything else but surrender and actually relinquish all of the things that has held you back from it. You know, a lot of times when you think about it from just this lesson, it's probably thinking or asking, what does this have to do with relationships? Mm -hmm. Well, what it has to actually to do with relationship is what you see on the screen right now. You can have a goal when it comes to your relationship goals, when it, whether it's getting married, staying married, or um, looking for a, a significant other, it starts with you first. But at the very top of that, it has to be your savior at the very top of it. Because if not, it's still going back to what you did at the very beginning, doing it in your own power. Because I think a part of what we don't realize is that the space in our heart that's for God, you can put other things there. You can put careers, you can put children, you can put um, credentials, but they're not big enough to fill it. So that means you got to have more of everything versus putting him in that space, which makes you need less. And that's the thing that I have just been so amazed with. And the reason why you see it when it says your savior and then it has your mate, you notice that your mate is before you. The key to becoming one is first putting Christ in the throne of your heart. The second thing is learning that being married is about serving. This is the highest level of selflessness and service. And so if you, and the reason why we want to, you know, dating and married couples, because sometimes once you're married, you're like, well, I didn't know, I didn't know I signed up for that. We want to make sure that people know when they're dating that when you're saying, I want to get married, you're saying, I want to be second. Or well, actually, you want to be um, third because God comes first, then your spouse, then yourself. And so then it's yourself. And the reason why it's a triangle is because in order for us to get close, 
God has to be at the top in order for two people to get close. By ourselves, we'll never get close. We, we don't have the power in our own nature to put someone else first. The only way when you see people do that, it's the love of God. It's the, it's the Holy Spirit. It's the fruits of the Spirit manifesting in our lives. And so the thing that I think we forget is that we're being saved daily. So when we say, oh, I'm saved, but we start to see Galatians 5, you talk about the lust of the flesh and, and walking in the spirit. When you start to see more of the old nature in your life, then you might be saved, but are you being saved? So when people say, oh, I'm saved, it's not a one-time thing. Salvation is something that is eternal. However, and it's not that we're working for it, we're working for it to, the fruits of the spirit to flourish in our life. And we can't, we can't end them, but we can minimize how much they grow in our lives by how much we yield to the, to the Lord and to the Holy Spirit. You know, and when you think about it, our relationships are not just for me yeah. and my spouse. If you try to keep it to yourself, and this is something that I, I, I've seen and spoken with a lot of men, and this is something that as we have our families and as our families grow, or even if you get started, we want it to just be me and her. <laughs> and that's okay, but that's not reality because it's not just going to be you and her because God has put other people in your life for a reason. So imagine if you decided to keep just you and your life and the things that you know, because we have experienced people here who are having great marriages and we have people who have experience when it comes to marriage, you know, that's what you have to think about. How can you impart in other people to actually help them come to a level of understanding from a relationship standpoint, not only with Christ our Savior and yourself, but then when they get involved with another person, how that is going to impact not just you and her, but all those that come in contact with them. Yeah, and the thing that I love of it to me, I know that I couldn't do it in my own power. One of the biggest elements I mentioned in the beginning was that to be able to forgive. One of the biggest elements that we need to understand is that forgiveness, someone who is forgiven understands forgiveness. And if you find yourself struggling with forgiving people, then you might need to go back to his feet and sit and say, Lord, there's areas of my heart I've not surrendered to you. There's areas of my mind and my past I've not surrendered to you. And so salvation is something that we should be constantly um, cultivating and being grateful for. And so to me, the more I realize how forgiven I am, the, the more I'm willing to forgive others. It, it's the key to being able to do that. And that's actually lead you what Renee is just here talking about when you give yourself away freely. This is talking about it from this perspective. And we give you this scripture because a lot of times you see this scripture and how it actually applies to stuff and all these things that you want to accumulate or accomplish in your life. Well, think about it in the form, in the context of relationships. We want to give you a different idea or a different spin on it tonight, just where you say, okay, if I see God and his kingdom and his righteousness, all the other things that I have this desire for, even if it may be another career and all those things and, and the tangible things that are, are going to be successful in your life. But when you think about it in the context of relationship, imagine how it's going to impact not just your immediate relationship, but the, even the future ones that are actually coming. And I think one of the things that I know salvation has done that's made a difference in us is that we all come with a temperament. We all have a personality. We all have things that happen in our life. But I really believe that the reason why we all need the fruits of the spirit, the reason why we all need salvation is because left to our own self, we can only get to a certain level of growth and where we can benefit in relationships by ourselves. But when we allow the Holy Spirit and we allow our relationship with God to be the source of how we do things, it gives us an, it gives us an unfair advantage that without Christ, so I don't think that Christians are better. I think we're better off. I think that when things happen, that we can recover because of the peace and the love of God. And so when we look at it as far as what are the evidence of it, and, and giving yourself away is understanding that that's what we are, we sign up for. Mm -hmm. You know, that's what we, when we, we seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, to make him a priority, to make him first, to make the first thing you do when you wake up in the morning is to spend time with the Lord so that you can exemplify or you can be a display of his splendor because you've spent time with him and if you really want to where it kind of boils all the way down to the very beginning we believe that if 
the God of the universe who created marriage and relationships, I think he knows how it is supposed to operate. So when you think about that, how it operates it by putting him first and putting others ahead of yourself, you're going to flourish. And that's where you're going to get all the things that we've kind of talked about tonight. When it comes to your own relationships, it's going to get better. And it, and it doesn't happen overnight. And I think so many times um, we want to receive without giving. Well, the Bible says that God so loved the world he gave. So if we're going to be like our heavenly father, we have to give to the Lord, our goals, our dreams, our desires, so that he can then say, okay, now this is what I want you to do with that. This is the direction I want you to go. And so when we begin to live our lives being led and being um, governed by his by His spirit and by his word, then when we, we're trying to make decisions, we, we can go to him and when we work with couples, well, we have, when was the last time you prayed? When was the last time you prayed together? When was the last time you spent time with the Lord? And it may seem cliche, but again, by ourselves, we are not so nice. You know, and, and the last point I'll make on this one is whether you're married or single or engaged or dating or whatever the case may be, this has to be the first. Yeah. This is why we wanted to bring and start out this course with talking about oneness and, and talking about the things that are pivotal and it's vital to any relationship that you would have is you have to give the first relationship, the first priority in your life, because no matter what we talk about for the next four weeks after this, it will be mute. It will be of no good. It will be of no value if you don't have this first relationship in right, proper position. And, and it's not, uh, we're not talking about religion. We're not talking about tradition. We're talking about you really having an authentic, genuine relationship where God is the source of how you make decisions, that the Bible is the foundation of your life. And that serving others and making the kingdom of God attractive to people, because we don't realize that the decisions that we make are either going to draw people to the kingdom or push them away. And so we want to make sure that we equip all of us to be in a position to, to be light and to be um, loving and kind and patient. And we can't do that by ourselves. And I think that we all will be honest, we realize that we need to have a relationship with God in order for our marriages to thrive. Because you can have a long marriage and do well, but at the end of the day, the Bible says, we're probably man to gain the whole world and lose his soul. So if you have a good marriage, but you can't share with anyone and you don't have an eternal place to be rewarded for that, then you kind of sell yourself short. And so this last, this slide is basically um, kind of explaining uh, where you guys can go. And so we hope that this time that we've spent talking about salvation and um, having a relationship with Jesus Christ has been beneficial and that it will remind you of the importance of spending time with God and giving him your heart and giving him your life. But we, we're creating this environment where now um, you can actually go to the, to the, to the website at richrelationshipus.com and we have the oneness code. It's a private group for you all. And so you can actually go there and the, under the um, about us, there's a space that says the refuge you can go there. This is only for the people who are in the oneness code, um, who are part of this group. You guys can go there. And the password is safe place. Um, if you have like, you want to talk to each other, you're welcome to do that. But if you have topics and things that are private and personal, and you want us to work with you through those things, you can send us in an email, you can text us, and us. you can call us. Feel free to call us. Because this is not just about us doing this, um, this one time a week. It's really about building a community and helping us to get healthier to the point where we can help somebody else because we can't always remain students. At some point, we each have to become teachers to people in our community. And it's not about being perfect or having all the answers, but it's about being available. If, if anything, God will be able to show you that God will use whoever will be willing to be available. And that's what we all we wanted to do even during this time is just to make ourselves available to those that we meet, that we already know, to say, you know what, we want to help whatever, wherever, whenever, however we can in helping you develop a better relationships. Again, we said we don't have all the answers, but there's some things that we do know, and we look to glean things from you as well. That's why we're doing this. We just see us ourselves as just the, the catalysts and the facilitators of this, that we hope this actually bursts into something bigger to 
embrace every single person that is in this course or even those who are listening or seeing this message for the very first time because this is what it's really all about we have to do this together as we say in our podcast we're stronger together and that's the only way that you're actually going to grow and so this kind of shows you ways you can connect with us ways that we can continue to outside it because Throughout the week, you guys will have, um, if you, when you go to the course, now, now if you go back and log in to the Rich Relationship Refuge, you're going to see lesson one, which is week one. The video will be up by tomorrow, but the content is already there. So if you want to go there and download the workbook, for those of you who don't have a workbook, don't worry. We've already put each week there where you go there and you hit it and you download it and it gives you the questions. It's very important that you take the time to throughout the week, spend a little bit of time answering these questions and being honest with yourself. The more honest you are with yourself, the more you're going to get out of this. This is not just about you listening. It's about you writing. It's about you talking. It's about you um, communicating with each other. And so you can do it your time together. You can do it separate, but you want to make sure that the things you write down, that you have time that you, you it creates conversation with the two of you. And so this whole week, um, there's assignments that you can go through. Um, and then each time you go through a video hit next, and then at the end of the course, you guys are all going to get a certificate mm -hmm. because we want to make sure that you have a way to show, hey, I invest. People want to share everything in social media. I made an investment in our marriage. And so that's there at the end once we actually get done. But we're and so what we're going to do now.